Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests. We have spoken to Audra before. She's an amazing person. We hear more from her amazing story. She's fascinated by books. Books have helped her throughout the life. Just inspiring. Listen carefully. Anything is possible. Make sure to focus, set your intention, and only share your ideas with people who want to celebrate with you. Welcome, Audra, again. I'm intrigued to listen more. So today, and again, it's this really understanding when you set your intentions in life and, and you think about what you want. I remember when I left, got my degrees and left working in the bookstore because I left in 1987, 1997. So I started in 87 and last time I left was 97. And I would always say, I just wish I could work. In, I wish I could work in the bookstore, but you know, it doesn't pay what corporate is paying. Mm-hmm. But whenever I would reflect, reflect on jobs that I enjoyed, I loved working with books. Mm-hmm. And I would say only if I could generate the same income, only mm-hmm. if I would do that in a minute, only if to find a way to make that a possibility for me was amazing. I was working in defense. And by that point, I moved from finance into acquisitions and I was negotiating contracts. And I, the project I was on was a $500 million contract. It had a lot of moving parts and it was probably about a 60, 70 hour week job, Mm -hmm. but I loved it. You know, I I loved it. I really did. But there was still something that felt unfulfilled. I went to a conference in Oklahoma City. I met Nikki Woods, who was at the time the senior producer for the time during a morning show. And we talked and I was sharing my story about how I grew up. Mm -hmm. And she invited me to share my story in one of her anthologies. An anthology for those listening is like chicken soup for the soul. Mm -hmm. right? It's a collection of published works or stories. So I shared it. It was truly life changing. The first thing that helped me understand I was onto something with it was I got a text message from a relative, a millennial. She's a millennial. So I'm a generation Xer, right? And she knew my story growing up homeless. She's my second cousin. She knew it, but she said something about reading my story in writing, just reading it without all the other excess noise Mm -hmm. of life made her decide to not only go back to school, but to go back to school for accounting. Oh. Ah, her, that's with an age. Angel. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right? So she returned back to school. She went back, went to John Jay and got her bachelor's degree. She was catapulted by reading my story and just saying, I have no excuse. That was the first thing that kind of tripped me like, hey, it's something about telling your story, writing little blogs on my Facebook about my story and how I grew up. And I went from like 300 followers to like 2000 followers Mm. and it just kept growing and spiraling and I continued to write and now I've produced four books of my own they have all debuted on Amazon as bestsellers number number one slot and I've also won awards and all types of things it's been an amazing experience but the most impactful for me has been not just being able to walk away from a six-figure job in 18 months being able to now also hire my daughter-in-law, create this legacy with my family. Mm-hmm. It has been such an unexpected blessing that is not just touching me, but I see it touching the lives of my grandbabies. I just feel so blessed. You know, broken Audra who walked into B. Dalton in 1987 could not even have imagined this life. The possibilities are endless because I haven't begun to scratch the surface. <laughs> I haven't begun to scratch the surface. There's so much more that can be done and that will be done. Well, you're ready. It seems like there's 26 letters in the alphabet. You only own one, the A, 
pick another one, right? And then you you move on. This is amazing. This is a really great story and congratulations. And sometimes we, as you said, we meet one person that can get you to the next person and we just have to keep going and believing in ourselves and not giving up. And being willing to receive. Yeah. I think sometimes when people go through difficult experiences and upbringings the way I did, we can block others out and put a wall up to the very people that are put here to help you. Mm -hmm. And so that's a huge lesson for me that I've had to learn to overcome and be more receptive and willing. Every year, I don't create what I call resolutions, but I do create guide paths for myself. Mm -hmm. And so in 2018, my promise to myself was to be open to receive love from the people that are willing to give it to me and to gracefully, gracefully release those that do not. I like the word gracefully. It's almost like you sent them, a friend of mine always says, we sent them on an island. We don't wish them anything bad. We sent them on an island, but yes. they were part of our journey and they, they can be on a different journey, not with yeah. you anymore. You know, friendships don't have to end with animosity, with anger, with, with negative feelings. When you recognize a person's part in your life has ended, you can gracefully allow it to end. That allows you to treasure memories without any bad feelings when they come up. You can go, oh, yeah, that was really a great time. And tell us about your marathon experience. That's how we, how Libby thinks we need to be connected. Marathoning for me was an amazing experience because it was a challenge. I never saw myself as a athletic person. Just, I, I was the book nerd, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not an athlete. Completing a marathon was such a mental challenge. Mm -hmm. It was a physical challenge, but it's really more mental than anything else. And so the very first one that I did, each mile, what I did was I thought about my life. I would think about an obstacle that I overcame, and I would focus on that for that mile. And then the next mile, I would do the next and the next. So by the time I got to 26.2, I was pretty much in tears. <laughs> It was such a huge win for me. Marathoning is, is an amazing experience, but most professional trainers will tell you to only train up to the first 20 miles. Mm -hmm. You don't really experience the full 26.2 until you're actually doing it. And that's a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. There's so much, there's so many unknowns. You don't know how your body's going to respond. You don't know how your feet are going to feel, how your head is going to feel, how you're going to feel emotionally. They always say the marathon starts at mile 20. Basically, you train till mile 20 all the time. And then the last six are showing what you can. And you know what you just said? The marathon has 26.2 miles and the alphabet has 26 letters, right? So when you think about you're interested in letters, the running has also 26. Gosh, I love that. Yeah, see, we just discovered that, right? It's a connection. Absolutely. One step at a time, right? And if you think in books, you can say one page at a time or one chapter at a time. I think also in marathoning, it's the training before you do the real thing. The real thing, I always feel like it's like a dessert. You have trained enough, you work enough. And this is just probably the easiest day if you train right. long enough, right? The work is the training. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. The work is the training. And, and this yeah. commitment. In the training, because typically your training is over a six month period. Yeah. So you're going through different seasons. I've run in 18 degree weather. <laughs> I've run through snow. I've run through ice. I've run through all the elements. I've run through 85 degree weather. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a testament to the ups and downs of life and the commitment yeah. that you make yeah. to the end goal. It's not always going to be pretty. The goal doesn't change. How you get there may change, but the goal yeah. doesn't change. Yeah. And it shows your determination. Again, you go from having nothing, you have your books, you train, you're determined, you have to you put in the energy and mm -hmm. you can do this. You are possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Marathon requires you to, it, it's really you in the pavement mm -hmm. and it requires so much positive self-talk, especially those last 6.2. <laughs> <laughs> when you are really alone. Yeah. Even though you have in New York City, there's an example that used to have 50,000 people, you're still alone, right? And you have to get through those last six months. Nobody's taking your shoes. Absolutely. It's definitely showed me a lot about myself. 
and what I can do. And New York Marathon is still a goal. That's still on the list. That may happen before I hang up my running shoes for good. (laughs) It's a once in a lifetime experience, right? And maybe you even run to your neighborhood where you grew up in Brooklyn. Who knows, right? You know, I did that once. I did the Brooklyn half Mm. um, Brooklyn rock and roll. Yeah. Okay. I did that in, that was the same year, I think, 2015. Yeah. I oh. think I ran about three races that year between the three fulls and the halves and the eight Ks. I did a whole bunch. So I did run the Brooklyn rock and roll half marathon and it went through because I grew up primarily in the Flatbush area. We went through all those different places because we moved so much. Yeah. It was very nostalgic. It was a very emotional race for me, mm-hmm. but I, I loved every moment of it. And if you had one inspirational thought or maybe more for the listeners, what is it? Be clear of what you want. A lot of people I know can give you a whole list of what they don't want. But I always say, just because you don't want red, doesn't mean you want blue. Be clear of what you want. We focus so much on what we don't want. That's the very thing we wind up attracting. Put your energy into be what you want. A lot of my clients, when we're working through their story, the story they want to tell, and I ask them what they want, a lot of times they get emotional Mm -hmm. because no one's ever asked them that. So what, what is it that you want? Eliminate all of the reasons why you can't have it. Just a conversation of what do you want? Mm-hmm. And then we can work through all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Then once you know what you want and you're clear what that is, set your intention on how you're going to go about it. And the third thing is only share it with people who are going to celebrate you for it. What advice, insight. So be clear set your intention, and only share it with the people who will celebrate you. Thank you so much, Audra. And we're ready for the other 25 letters in the alphabet when we talk (laughs) next time. Thank you for having me. This has been an amazing time and it's been a pleasure meeting you. And I'll definitely come back whenever you want me to. (laughs) Good. Thank you so much, Audra. How inspiring. Listen to the people who want to celebrate you. Who are those people around you? Look around, make sure to be in contact with those people who want to celebrate you, but also be clear, set an intention. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Chime in, don't miss out. Follow us. Inspiring stories can help you, can uplift you. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book. It started out with the book from Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Don't miss out. See you next time. Thank you very much.